hey guys welcome back to the channel and thank you for clicking if you're new here hi there welcome and today i have a special guest in the building can you please introduce yourself to us sure. my name is Ajwa linda i am from the united states but i am currently living in ghana so why are we here today to uh, guys this interview is not done in a crowd okay just to let you guys know so why are we here today we are here because we are attending a talent show um, at a community event that's near Ajidum, Asebu Ajidum. Many people might know it as Cape Coast okay. instead of, you know, Ajidum. But yeah, that's why we're here. You, how long have you been living in Ghana, by the way? Um, I've been here for nearly three years. Three years? Yeah, three years. You don't live, like you live in Accra, you know, right? But you kind of adopt this community to be your home, this town. What informs that decision? Um, that's a very good question. So I have a nonprofit organization in the United States, and we work with a lot of children. And when I moved here, um, I used to see a lot of children like out in the streets, not being very active. And uh, you know, it, it really broke my heart. So spiritually, I really believe that I was led to come here with a purpose other than enjoyment. So what I've done is I had opened, um, I'm in the process of building a learning center for the children. So the learning center will allow the children to learn classes, training for free for the local children. Yeah. And then also will be some classes for the adults as well mm -hmm. to learn different skills that are not taught. Uh, in the villages. Mm -hmm. yeah. So another question I, I want to ask is why did you, like are you in Ghana to live here for good or you're just visiting, I mean are you living here permanently? I am like I have a residence here. I, I live here. Yeah I do. I do. I will always ask this question because I'm um, like I want to know why the decision to leave America as an American to Ghana or are you like uh, you're African-American right Correct. or are you Ghanaian American Se please set the record straight for us to for better understanding sure so I was born in the United States and uh, even though I live here in Ghana I still travel back to the United States because I have a nonprofit out there yes. but I'm here longer I've been here longer for the last three years in Ghana so I've been uh, engaged in a lot of activities as regards to children um, and I also like uh, conduct business consultation with uh, companies or individuals who want to streamline their processes so I bring the skills that I've learned in the United States here in Ghana to help companies like take their business to the next level yeah what informed your decision to move to Ghana? You just, how did it happen for you? Like you just all of a sudden decided you were going to Ghana. What informs the decision? I don't know. Well, the first time I've been to Ghana was like seven years. Okay. I've been here seven years ago. Okay. And when the first time that I came here, I only stayed here for two weeks. Okay. And I knew I did not see enough. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to visit the villages. So when I was here, I mainly stayed in, you know, what I call the city area, mm. in Accra, where you see the nice buildings and stuff like that. Kind of reminds me of, you know, United States. Yeah. But I knew that, I mean, I used to always hear about the villages, but I never visited. You never been to any? No, the first time, this, the seven years that I was the, uh, within, seven years ago, yes. I never visited the villages. And people always tell me, oh, you don't want to go there, and you yeah. know. So it was just so discouraging not yeah. to go there. I'm that type of person. I, I, I just don't live in fear like that. And, um, you know, helping people has always been my passion. It has always been my passion. It's been my passion since I was in the Nation of Islam in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, it's an organization that is a spiritual, um, spiritual religion, but it's also strongly community-based, meaning that they believe in helping communities. And also I think it has to be part of you, you know, t to have it in your heart to want to help people. So, yeah, that's what happened. I came here seven years ago. I stayed for a short period of time. And then um, about three years um, during the presidential elections, I'm like, 
<laughs> if certain decision happens, I'm out of here. <laughs> but when I came here, I really didn't come here with a. Uh, I really didn't come here with a mission. I really didn't know what I was going to do. Okay. But then, as I mentioned before, when I would venture out in the streets and I would see the children, mm. then that's when life changing happened. Yeah. So how was it for you visiting a village after being discouraged by people not to visit villages? So you decided to vi visit a village. Yeah. Which village was that? Um, I can't remember because at that time I wasn't familiar with my environment, but uh, um, I don't know if people would call this a village, but I was over there by uh, Cocobite. Cocobite? Yeah, it's not like your, your village, like, uh, like in Adjidum and um, that area, yeah. but the condition of the, the way people lived. Mm. When I saw it, it broke my heart, to be honest with you, because um, the way I saw the houses, the, the houses, the businesses, you don't see that in the United States. So when I saw that, to know that Ghana is a rich country, I could not understand, you know, the living condition of the people. And I, and I remember being in the car with a friend and I just broke down and cried. I really, really cried because I said there is no way humans should have to live like that and especially not in a rich country. Yeah. So that was what informed your decision to start the community program for kids, like the learning center. And please could you throw more light on your projects here in, what's the name of this place? Adjidam. This, okay, the name of your community is tell us your project on why you choose this place. Mm -hmm. So the community is located in a Cebu Adjidum. The Cebu Adjidum. I have to take my time to say that. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it, it had to be spiritually because I went there to purchase a piece of land okay. to build a house. Okay. I had no idea that I was going to build a center or anything like that. I went there to purchase a house and then when I met with the chief um, uh, we went through the traditional process which is you know why you want the land and what's the purpose for it and etc so he asked me you know what is the purpose of the land I said well I want to build a house and be part of a community whereas I can help children and then he asked me he said well I'm working on some projects if I have any projects, uh, is it okay if I give you a call? Because I'm a project manager in the States and I work, you know, different projects as well in the States. So I said, of course, you know, that was something that I definitely embraced. And it just, it took off from there. So the chief and I would talk about education and schooling and things of that nature. And I wanted to uh, offer the children an environment that wasn't in the box, meaning that when they learned, they would not be, they would not move up based upon tests and grade level. It would allow them an environment like a Montessori school. A Montessori, Montessori is a, a school that allows a child to just challenge their skills. Because one child can be good in math, another child can be good in science, another child can be good in English, another child can be good in another topic. So I don't want to put people in a box, you know, let them explore and master that skill and just provide them the guidance and the resources so they can master that skill. So that is the purpose of that, and to teach them technology because we got to become more competitive with the world when it comes to technology. And there's a lot of bright children in, in Ghana and, and, and Africa in general that don't have the resources or the environment to explore the, their intelligence. So how do you sponsor this project? How do you fund it? I mean, how do you fund it? Can you throw more light on that? Sure. I use my own private funding. I use my own private funding to build the learning center. Yes. <laughs> I have received like some donations, like a hundred dollars or 500 CDs for books and for material. But if anybody know anything about building, you know, 
that's I, I can't put any of that towards the cost to yeah. build a center. Yeah, but I'm grateful for the donation, you know, for the books and the material. Yeah, but you know, it's my own private funding. <laughs> so, should someone see this video and wish to be part of the project, do you accept it? Absolutely, because here's the deal: the the project isn't just for me. You know, I, I want to create the environment, but I I definitely welcome people who who have a desire to teach. Like for example, you are you're you're great in your craft, and if you want to teach a person how to operate a camera or you know take pictures or whatever the case is. Please, you know, we welcome, you have an open door to teach the children or adults or have, have adult classes. Mm -hmm. You've been here for like three years, almost straight, except maybe you visit America for vacation, right? Correct. How is life? Life is very interesting. Really? Yeah, because to be here, I have to learn the culture, right? So, you know, people, uh, they behave differently than how they do in the States. The communication, you know, I don't speak Sri, very small, as they would say. Um, so, you know, at times there can be a communication barrier. So I have learned to speak slowly, okay. but I'm also in the process of learning tree, taking tree classes. Yeah, I, I thought you said you learned to speak tree. I, I was about to <laughs> my face, like. You don't I, speak well, you speak a bit of tree. Small, small, you? small. And you know, by being around people who speak tree, um, I can pick up on the conversation, especially they mix a little English with it, but I can't like. Yeah, but you can you can say something, something small to the audience. Tell them something. Oh, uh, Marasi. Um, um, now you put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Estesine. I. Right? Estesine. Yeah, yeah. A. I. Uh, Mimoye. Uh, Mimoye, I'm missing something. You try. You try more than me, so rest. Don't worry. <laughs> so, now looking back since the time you came and decide to be here for good, do you have any regrets? Little thing you wish you could have, I mean, you should have done differently? You know, I think that's life, period. You know, no matter where you go. Because I can say, while I was in the States doing certain things, uh, I wish I would not have made certain decisions. So for being in Ghana, um, I think it's very important to have resources. You know, you, resources is very important if you are, like, if you want to venture into a business, because you have to know the culture. Yeah. And you, you, you have to know how the culture interact with each other. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. I, I just recently had a conversation with uh, a, a Ghanaian friend who I know, and, um, and he's able to, I, in, in fact, I consult him on his business, and he's doing very well. Uh, after my consultation, giving him recommendations on what he should do to enhance his businesses. So he went to school and uh, obtained all these certificates, and he's doing well. So he, he tried to make a comparison with me versus him. And I said, well, you grew up in Ghana. You yeah, know, yeah. You, you're the one with the resources. You come to your United States, you can't beat me there. Because I know the resources, I know the system inside and out, whereas you don't. So that's why I say that if you come here, I'm, I don't consider myself as a foreigner, oh. but if you come, if you come here, you know you're not from Ghana. Mm. Um, if you're trying to build a business, it's very important to have resources. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> in simple terms, people should come here with worth of knowledge and finance. Yes. Yes. Especially money. Yes, yes. You definitely have to. Having resources helps you to collaborate with people to make money. So if you don't have the resources, then you know you got to figure things out on your own, and it's it's going to cost you something. Yeah, yeah, right. Cost, yeah, yeah. And if you're not financially and mentally ready to uh, prepare to suffer for some type of loss, uh, you might want to wait. Okay. Until you come. Okay. Yeah. So maybe a friend, a cousin, a friend or anybody neighbor may see this video or may have, you know, be aware that you have been in Ghana and you're loving it. 
and they wish to make the same decision do you encourage them to come with the resources please now that's a very good question because I have a company here okay. it's called Audra Linda Financial Associates and what we do is help individual transition to Ghana okay. so if they have questions about anything anything from how much is local foods uh, the the conversion rate on CDs where to stay in Ghana housing land purchase building anything that they need uh, any type type of resources we can refer them to someone okay. we definitely could refer them to someone so a cousin a friend or anyone who wants to come visit Ghana you definitely want to connect with someone like myself who offered that type of services mm. unless you just want to, you got money to lose mm. waste mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, most okay. people don't yeah <laughs> so someone seeing this video i'm wondering oh okay linda i wish to move to ghana how do i connect to you how do i reach you through your um the service services that through the services that you offer how do they reach you uh, well, they can call me. Okay. Uh, uh, I can give you my contact information okay. or I could provide it right now. Okay. Uh, my Ghana number is 020-313-2525. Okay. My USA number is 630-400-5533. I am on WhatsApp. Um, because people like to communicate a lot on WhatsApp, considering okay. that, you know, it's long distance. So I'm on WhatsApp. We have a website that they can check out, which is alfinancialassociates.com. And I have an email address, which is linda at alfinancialassociates.com. <laughs> Strictly business, okay? Thank you very much. So, would you like to, have you been trying the food, sir? Did you struggle when you came? No, no, I love their local food. I prefer local food than any other food. I love it, I do. Which of the, which of, which, which one, which of the Ghanaian foods is your favorite right red, now? Red, 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 red. Because you know what, a lot of their foods is very similar to our food in the States. Oh, the right. difference is the seasoning, because okay. the season is grown naturally here. Mm. Like red, red is just black eyed peas, black eyed peas. But the way they season it with the palm oil and, oh my gosh, then you eat it with the plantains and then the rice. It's just delicious. Oh my gosh, I love it. So have <laughs> you learned to prepare any yet? I tried, but... No. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. So how did you came about the name Ajwa? A friend of mine called me Ajwa. Uh, my friend asked me what day I was born on, which is Monday. Okay. And I didn't want to use my, the name, what I call my slave name. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, being in an African country, I wanted that. Oh. African name, so Ajwa. Okay, so you really appreciate that a lot more, right? Gosh, yeah, I would love to go through a name ceremony because because Ajwa means Monday, mm. you know, that means, you know, other people's name can be Ajwa. Yeah. So I would love one day to experience a, a name ceremony and have my own personal <laughs> name. So okay. one day I would uh, experience that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask a very personal question. Are you single? Yes, I'm single. Searching and ready to mingle? You know, not really searching, but if he comes, you know, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm open. Okay, if he comes, yeah, you I'm are open. not searching, but you're, you're... Yeah, I'm open. Definitely open to meeting somebody. Yeah, of course. Do you have any, like, do you mind um, maybe finding love with a Ghanaian or any African or anybody anywhere in the world? Do you have a specific... Um, country or culture that you would rather you know fall in love with no I, I just think that uh, connecting with someone with uh, a common interest okay. uh, is important to me um, if he's an African guy I don't do polygamy mm, okay so okay. polygamy is off yeah. the table <laughs> I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm not that well versed oh, in Ghana yeah. yet not well versed but I'm, I'm yeah, yeah 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 mm. no I, I no 
Uh, that that's that's a deal breaker for me. Okay. But I'm but I'm open. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna list the contact down in the description of this video. Should you wanna contact Ajua for business, please whatever contact you get here strictly business thank you so thank you for coming sister oh thank you for having me i appreciate the interview okay so i hope you do feel at home in ghana like you honestly don't feel like oh my god sometimes i don't belong here oh no 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 i am so comfortable i call everybody my brothers and sisters okay. no matter even in businesses mm. you know i'm like sister brother it just naturally flows it just naturally naturally flows yeah yeah okay so guys patronize her for what she does if you want to move to ghana from the states especially and you're looking for someone to connect with she got you covered okay you contact her business um i'm going to list everything in the description and um contact and come on go on ahead and do business all right thank you for coming sister thank Bye. you <laughs>